Welcome back to Corporate Governance in Action. In this program, we will be looking at corporate governance in Hong Kong. Over the past five years, Hong Kong has brought in a huge number of corporate governance reforms. We have amended the company's ordinance and listing rules to increase the number of independent directors serving on boards and to enable statutory derivative action by shareholders. We have reformed our Securities and Futures Ordinance to criminalize the filing of false or misleading listing documents. We have introduced a code of best practice and are soon to set up a new body to oversee accounting standards. With this surge in corporate governance regulation, Hong Kong has made it clear that we are serious about raising standards. But are investors convinced? What is the investors' view of our governance standards in Hong Kong? How do we step up against other jurisdictions in Asia and in the West? Are real comparisons possible between jurisdictions with such vastly different economic and cultural environments? The first point that many of our guests make is that the business environment in Hong Kong has many unique features which have to be taken into account in any assessment of our corporate governance standards. Uh, in Hong Kong, we know that more than 85% of the shareholders base are highly concentrated, be it in the form of family control firm, or be it in the form of uh, China-based companies, therefore having, these, having the, uh, the, 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 the state as the major shareholder. In, an, in a nutshell, shareholder concentration in Hong Kong is pretty high compared to US or Europe. And therefore, to that extent, uh, uh, Nine out of ten times when we're talking about corporate governance structure, we are focusing exclusively on how to balance, how to, how to strike a balance between uh, major and minor shareholders. Therefore, a lot of the arguments and debates or discussions along the line of corporate governance in Hong Kong has been omitting the following important issues. One being, what about uh, the strategic direction of a company? Because in a nutshell, while we are talking about corporate governance, while we are spending uh, millions and millions of dollars in terms of uh, conforming with the structure and the form, we always, we always uh, 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 miss that one important issue. Practicing corp good corporate governance is a mean for us to drive towards enhancing shareholders' value. Uh, and to that, I would say there is a big overlap between major and minor shareholders. Um, the challenge for Hong Kong, uh, on the other hand, as I understand it, is that because of that high, co high shareholders concentration, uh, we simply don't have any uh, takeover activity in Hong Kong because uh, listed companies are under the firm hand. Uh, takeover in Hong Kong is, near, is, is hardly possible, if not impossible. So therefore, without the natural market forces, that drives those bad companies out of the market by takeover. Um, the badly managed company cannot simply be, be expelled from the market. And this is uh, one issue that we have to look into in Hong Kong. The problem of um, listed companies not being domiciled in Hong Kong is, I think, unique to Hong Kong, and I know of no other jurisdiction where the bulk of our listed, the bulk of the jurisdiction's listed companies are actually not uh, domiciled in that jurisdiction. At the moment, as far as I know, over 80% of the companies uh, listed on the main board and the growth enterprise market boards are domiciled elsewhere in the world, and particularly places like uh, Bermuda and the, the Cayman Islands. And this does pose a unique regulatory problem for Hong Kong because um, as a result of these companies not being Hong Kong companies, the provisions of the company's ordinance do not 
largely apply to these companies, with the exception of the fairly minim minimalist provisions in Part 11 of the Companies Ordinance, which requires non-Hong Kong companies to register with the Companies Registry. Having said that, there are provisions in the Companies Ordinance which do and must apply to uh, non-Hong Kong companies registered in Hong Kong. Um, for example, the provisions regarding the registration of charges, disqualification of directors, uh, inspections, investigations, winding up of unregistered companies, and more recently, the newly introduced provisions on shareholder remedies. But obviously, you could not make the provisions in the company's ordinance which apply to company general meetings applicable to these companies as there would be a major conflict, not to mention confusion, with the, the law of their home jurisdiction regarding the holding of AGM. So we ha have to be very, very selective in determining which provisions of the company's ordinance apply to such companies. Given this, effectively, the only uh, means we have of regulating listed companies in Hong Kong, which are not Hong Kong companies, is, is through the listing rules. And this is why the current uh, debate on giving statutory backing to key listing rule provisions, in particular those regarding financial disclosure and connected uh, transactions, is so important. But as I said at the beginning, this is a very unique Hong Kong problem. We cannot look to other jurisdictions to provide guidance, and we will have to work out our own homegrown solution. The challenges to corporate governance in any particular market depend to a great degree on the ownership structure of that market, uh, by which I mean that if a um, majority of companies, in Hong Kong's case around 90% of companies have controlling shareholders, again by which I mean shareholders who have 25% or more of the votes, which in practice is enough to determine the outcome of most shareholder meetings and to determine the composition of a board, then we have what I call a controlled market. There isn't the uh, pressure that you have in um, markets where companies are widely owned uh, with no major shareholders uh, because there isn't the potential for a hostile takeover. So the market for corporate control doesn't really exist. Uh, in those circumstances, uh, it's um, whether the market is well governed or not depends to a critical extent on the checks and balances to prevent the major shareholders or the controlling shareholders from oppressing the minorities, from self-dealing um, and uh, uh, generally taking advantage of, of their position. Uh, by contrast, um, if you look at, for example, the UK, uh, where in the FTSE 100 blue chip index, only a few companies would have a shareholder with 25% or more, probably one or two, um, then uh, there is continual pressure on the management and boards uh, to be transparent with their investors, to maintain good uh, corporate credibility, uh, because uh, otherwise they themselves could fall to a hostile takeover by a another company that is willing to uh, uh, to correct the uh, defects in the governance of that company. So there's a much more transparent uh, relationship, I think, between those companies with widely dispersed ownership and um, uh, and the outside world. Uh, most significantly, the structure of companies uh, is quite different. Uh, in the UK, companies tend to be broadly, uh, broadly owned, uh, with management being separate from, uh, from the shareholding base. In Hong Kong, clearly, there are a lot of family companies, uh, there are a lot of situations where there are controlling, uh, controlling shareholders, and that creates uh, a different set of tensions and challenges uh, to address. Secondly, uh, investors in uh, Europe, investors in London in particular, tend to be more predominantly institutional rather than retail. Uh, and being institutions and being better organised to some degree, there is a degree of shareholder activism, a degree of shareholder pressure in moderating the behaviour of companies. Uh, those sorts of pressures and mechanisms don't exist in Hong Kong to the same extent or have the same impact uh, as, of, as of today. Uh, all in all, uh, that creates a very different set of environments and a very different set of challenges to, to address.